And I acknowledge once again the fact that in our societies there are a majority of the Muslims that are uh, in fact not terrorists. But I know that if the amount of them will grow and if their culture will become more dominant, that it will change. And that the concept of taqiyya that they are stating now by not really saying and showing often who they are will change if they become stronger. And I'm not the first one. Maybe, See, no, it, I, want, it, it, I, want to, it, I want to emphasize one thing, because you said, how can you be so sure? I want to tell you one thing, because you are a British journalist. I In the Netherlands, the topic of Islamization has become increasingly polarized over the last decade. The mainstream media and the establishment do not want to talk about it. And then there's one man who has been warning the Dutch about the dangers of Islam for over 10 years. Geert Wilders. So is Geert Wilders right about the dangers of Islam? Or is he perhaps just a radical himself? Let's finally settle things and find out the truth. The only way to find out the truth is by looking at the numbers. Let's look at the facts and find out the truth about Muslims in the Netherlands. The population in the Netherlands looks as follows. There are 17 million people living in the country, of which around 5% is Muslim. So there are around 850,000 Muslims in the Netherlands. According to the Dutch security service, there are around a few hundred jihadists in the Netherlands. These are people who want to force Islam upon others by killing non-Muslims. A couple of dozens of them travel to the Middle East to fight for ISIS. But most of them stay in the Netherlands and are waiting for an opportunity to strike. Maybe they want to do so by using a rifle, maybe they want to do it by using a knife, or maybe they even want to blow themselves up. The good news is that these people almost always get arrested by the Dutch security services before they have the chance to strike. Life goes on as jihadists are quietly arrested by the Dutch security service, probably on a weekly basis. But sometimes they make the news as a confused man with a knife. Suddenly such confused men with knives are arrested all over the country. The Dutch have never heard anything about confused men with knives, but since recent years they are suddenly all over the place. Usually the mainstream media don't pay too much attention to these cases, don't provide any information about the perpetrator and if something bigger happens such as a car attack at Amsterdam's central station the local police and the media deny that it was a terror attack make up an excuse and refuse to reveal any information even when information is later leaked by anonymous employees anyway according to the Dutch security service there are a few thousand jihadist sympathizers in the Netherlands these are people who are open to the idea of becoming a jihadist and could possibly quote-unquote radicalize to become jihadists. This is why the problem never goes away. It is not like the police can simply arrest these couple of thousands of potential jihadists and the problem will be solved because there are always new ones quote-unquote radicalizing so the problem never goes away. There is an endless inflow of new jihadist sympathizers coming from the larger population of Muslims. So let's say that up to 0.1% of the Dutch Muslim population are the jihadists. It is only a very small group, but with a large impact on the society. The next group are the active Islamists. These are the people who just like the jihadists want to enforce Islam upon others. But they follow a different method in order to reach that goal. Instead of using violence, they try to impose Islam through politics. These people can be seen infiltrating Dutch political parties and creating Islamic interest groups in the Netherlands. These groups often present themselves as peaceful groups representing the interests of Muslims, fighting against harmful stereotypes, promoting mutual understanding and things like that. But when looking more closely, it can be seen that they often have strange connections to Islamic organizations from abroad, such as the Muslim Brotherhood or Diyanet. 
They are often financed by strange organizations from Islamic oil states. The active Islamists can be seen trying to shut down debate by crying Islamophobia or trying to make criticism of Islam illegal by law, such as the Federation Islamic Organizations Netherlands try to do. It can also be seen that these people form a network that includes members from different institutions. For example, this figure who works at the Ministry of Safety and Justice is a great fan of the Muslim Brotherhood Issam al-Bashir. He also worked at the corporation Moroccan Dutchman, an organization where also this guy is from, the second man of the Islamic political party that has strong ties with the Erdogan administration. This figure, coming from the Labour Party, worked at the police department of Amsterdam as a so-called diversity officer and recommended to allow female police women to wear an Islamic headscarf while working, something that would increase the presence of Islam in the Dutch public space. And she has ties with this guy, also coming from the Labour Party, who is a fan of the Muslim Brotherhood al Qaradawi, wanted to allow Muslim youth workers to refuse to shake a woman's hand, tried to get Islam taught to non-Muslim children in schools, and wanted to ban people who vote Geert Wilders from joining the police force. Columnist voor Elsevier, Vinia, vindt Marcus daarom ongeschikt als burgemeester. Ik heb uitgebreid onderzoek gedaan naar wat hij gedaan heeft in Amsterdam en naar Dina's Kamerlid, maar vooral in Amsterdam toen die stadsdeel burgemeester was. En hij heeft werkelijk niets nagelaten om de islam te introduceren in Amsterdam's grote vaart. En dat, dat heeft er in Amsterdam al toe geleid dat zijn eigen PvdA binnen twee jaar uit elkaar klapte in het stadsdeel Slotervaart. Hij is geen verbindende man, hij houdt zich nadrukkelijk bezig met specifieke belangen van islam en Marokkanen. En dat lijkt mij een slechte basis voor een benoemde burgemeester of überhaupt een burgemeester. Meanwhile in Rotterdam, another active Islamist is also trying to push the police force to allow female Muslims to wear their Islamic headscarf while working. This time not by working as a diversity officer, but instead by complaining at the Dutch College of Human Rights, an organization of leftists, which recently declared that they thought that she was right. And she is connected to a local Islamic party, which is also fighting to advance Islamization. So perfectly according to the Islamic mentality, the active Islamists often combine an attitude of victimhood with a very aggressive attitude. Their goal is to slowly Islamize the country through political means, one step at a time. They will not speak honestly about some of the negative aspects of Islam or try to reform Islam. They will simply try to defend Islam and advance Islam in the country of the unbeliever. And they do so while hiding behind the human rights, even though Islam itself does not acknowledge these very same human rights. They use the left-wing hegemony that exists in the country for their own goals. These people are basically acting in accordance with the Muslim Brotherhood's strategy for Europe, which is to use our own rules against us to advance Islam. So these are the active Islamists. These people are active because they're constantly doing things. They've made a career out of this and they naturally remain in contact with one another. And what binds them is Islam itself. The next group are the passive Islamists. And this group is actually the most worrisome of all. And they are not the most worrisome of all because of something that they're doing, because they aren't really doing anything. They are the most worrisome of all because of their sheer size. According to a study done by the Berlin Social Science Center in 2008, 70% of Muslims in the Netherlands agree that religious laws are more important than secular laws. And 54.5% agree that Muslims should go back to the roots of Islam. It can also be seen that the younger generation is more radical than the older generation. According to a study done by Motivation in Amsterdam in 2011 and 2014, 80% of young Turkish Muslims believe that there is nothing wrong with the jihad or holy war against non-believers. And 90% of them agree that Dutch Muslims who fight in Syria are heroes. So do you think that these numbers are shockingly high? They actually aren't. These are more or less the same numbers that you'll get when studying Muslim populations in other Western countries. So there is really nothing special about the Netherlands or the Muslim population of the Netherlands. 
that produces these type of percentages. So let's be optimistic and say that in 2017 around 65% of the Dutch Muslims are the Islamists and that within this group a very small minority are the active Islamists. Now this group of people will not engage in terrorism however they do either consciously or unconsciously agree that Islam is better than Western values. They will defend Islam no matter what. They will also claim that terrorism has nothing to do with Islam and they'll often blame the West or blame Israel for the suffering inflicted by their fellow Muslims. For example they will claim that ISIS is just a conspiracy created by Israel because the evil Jews are behind it, right? The passive Islamists are the silent majority and they support the active Islamists within their group. And even though most of them will probably disagree with the methods used by the jihadists, they do share the same goal as the jihadists. And this is a very important point. They disagree with the methods that are used by the jihadists, but they do share the same goal with them because they agree that Islam should spread further and that Islam should rule. It is just that they are not willing to engage in violence for it. So the passive and the active Islamists together are about 65% of the total Muslim population. And then this is me being optimistic. Bang voor salafisme. Ja. Geldt dat ook voor u? Um, in de kern niet. Um, wel in sommige uitingsvormen. Uh, Salaf is voorganger. En een salafist is iemand die op de voorganger wil lijken. Nou ja. En dus een, een moslim die we nu voor salafist verslijten, is iemand die heel graag op profeet Mohammed wil lijken. In, in dus, die definitie zou u zichzelf ook salafist zijn? Ja, kunnen. eigenlijk elke moslim is een beetje salafist. Dus nou, dat, dat vinden we meteen eng hoor, als u dat zegt. Ja, toch is het zo. Ik heb ook wel eens gezegd, ik ben jihadist. Then around 35% of the Muslims in the Netherlands are the so-called moderate Muslims. These are the Muslims that do not think that Islam is better than Western values. And they probably don't think that much about their religion anyway. They're just living their lives. If they're female, they are probably not wearing a headscarf. They'll identify as Muslim because their parents are, but they'll rarely go to a mosque. So if you ever have one of these interesting discussions with your friend about Islam, and he tells you that he knows a lot of Muslims and they're all nice, he's probably talking about the people who belong to this 35%. Within this 35%, a very small minority are the reformers. These are Muslims or ex-Muslims who are speaking out against Islam. And they are trying to reform some of the problematic aspects of Islam. Think about people like Hamad Abdel Samad in Germany and Ali Rizvi in the United States. The Netherlands has some of such people. And of course Ayaan Hirsi Ali used to live in the Netherlands. But this is an extremely small group. Probably 0.001%. So around 10 people. And then I'm being optimistic. Because even if I take a very wide definition of the word reformer or critic, I actually can't find 10 of such people in the Netherlands. However, there are actually quite some people among this 35% who would really like to speak out and become reformers. But they are too afraid to do so because they might become the victim of repercussions coming from the other 65% or from the Dutch left-wing media and political activists. Nou, ik heb begrepen dat de uitspraak niet bindend is. Dat betekent dat de minister van Justitie er uiteindelijk over zal gaan. Ik moet de eerste VVD-minister van Justitie nog uh, met ruggengraat nog tegenkomen. Die gaat zeggen. Uh, we gaan geen hoofddoek uh, doen bij de politie. Dus ik denk dat uh, ze gaat winnen. We gaan verliezen en zij gaat winnen. Waarom is dat erg? Waarom is het erg? Omdat ik het heel erg vind dat als ik aangifte zou doen van het een of ander, dat er tegenover mij iemand staat die haar geloofsovertuiging uh, in mijn gezicht duwt. Dat is het eerste. Ten tweede dat die iemand een vrouw is en die, door, die zich door haar geloofsovertuiging uh, toont ondergeschikt te maken aan een man. Want ik heb nog nooit een man met een hoofddoek gezien. Het zijn altijd de vrouwen die een hoofddoek moeten dragen binnen de islam. Toch zegt zij zelf, ik wil dat Tuurlijk. graag. Zou ik ook doen als ik gerstenspoeld was. Tuurlijk, zou ik ook doen. 
yeah. During the year 2017, myself I have been contacted by a handful of them and all of them have a quite similar story. And this is very understandable because a Muslim who decides to speak out against some of the negative aspects of Islam has to be afraid to either be killed or severely injured by his or her fellow Muslims, to be called a racist or an Islamophobe by the Dutch left-wing media, or to even be legally prosecuted by the Dutch legal system. A moderate Muslim speaking out against Islam doesn't just have to be afraid of this 65%. They also have to be afraid of the left in the Netherlands, the ones who were always preaching for more tolerance and diversity. They are more afraid of the average Labour Party Muslim than that they are afraid of Geert Wilders. And if they want to use social media to get their message out, there is a chance that they'll get censored. And if they want to use a video platform like YouTube, there is a chance that they'll get banned from it. And of course this is not a good way to empower new Muslim reformers. It is actually quite a missed opportunity that this 35% isn't empowered more by the majority society. Because if there is a chance to reform Islam in Europe, it is by creating a very safe environment for some of the people who are among this 35%. And sadly, this environment currently does not exist. So taken together, the population of Muslims in the Netherlands looks as follows. 65% are the Islamists. And within this group, there is a group of 0.1% of the total population who are the jihadists and another small minority who are the active Islamists. And 35% are the moderate Muslims and within them there is a group of 0.001% of the total population that are the reformers. So no, not all Muslims are terrorists. However, there are several concerning things about the total population of Muslims in the Netherlands. The first problematic thing is that there are more Islamists than non-Islamists. The majority of Muslims are also Islamists. And this is actually not surprising, because in Islam itself, there is no distinction between Islam and Islamism. This distinction doesn't exist. Islam is Islamism. So this 65% is way more serious about their religion than the other 35%. And this can also be seen in Pew Research 2013 which found a correlation between the amount of praying and the support for Sharia. And a study done in 2011 in the Netherlands also discovered a very positive link between the degree of religiosity and the support for political Islam. The second problematic thing is that there are more jihadists than that there are reformers. There are currently more Muslims in the Netherlands who are willing to kill unbelievers for Islam than that they are Muslims who are willing to speak out against the negative aspects of Islam. There are more confused men with knives than that there are Muslims who are speaking out against them. The third problematic thing is that this 65% of Muslims in the Netherlands support the active Islamists. But at the same time, this 35% does not support the reformers. It is not like Ayaan Hirsi Ali had any relevant support among Dutch Muslims. And it is not as if any of the individuals who can be defined as reformers or even as critics of Islam for writing some critical articles about it get much support from within the Muslim community. And of course, the same is the case for these active Islamists. None of these people have ever shown any support for people like Ayan Hirsi Ali or Hamad Abdel Samad. They will accuse anyone who speaks out against what they're doing of Islamophobia. So having outlined these facts, let's go back to the question. Geert Wilders. Is Geert Wilders right about the dangers of Islam? Or is he just some radical nutcase? Having studied the facts, the conclusion is that Geert Wilders is actually right. However, much more can be done to empower and to create a safe environment for this 35% of moderate Muslims. If there is any chance to reform Islam in Europe, it is not by cooperating with the active Islamists, but instead by empowering those among this 35% who really would like to speak out. This is Paul from TheBetaLove.com. If you like the content, please subscribe or consider supporting my work through Patreon. And most importantly, never stop debating the left on Islam. Take care.